Hey, what is up, crew? We're back with another video, and today we are going to be reviewing Lagunitas IPA India Pale Ale, highly balanced and super drinkable, 6.2 alcohol blood volume. So, thumbnail. Ah! So, uh, let's get into it. But before we do. I just want to tell you, thanks for watching. So put on your tinfoil hats, because you never know when the government's watching. And let's review this thing, boy. Cold brewski. All right, so. I like IPAs. I like beer. I'm an avid uh, beer drinker. It's my uh, alcohol of choice. I'd rather drink a beer than... Take a shot. Not that I can't take a shot, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, first sip. It's nice and yeasty. Not too hard. Sometimes it's a little too yeasty, but uh, this is IPA, so it's not dark or anything like that. Um, yeah. Honestly, I'd give this an 8 out of 10. Can I put this in your face? Ah, uh, I don't think you could see that because it's dark in here, but. But, um, yeah, personally, um, I mostly wanted to record. This is an 8 out of 10, by the way, if you didn't know. But, um, I just want to talk and vent. I'm feeling kind of down. Maybe it's just the weather because of, uh, um, it's like super cloudy and dark outside right now, but like I've been reflecting and I feel very behind in life and very jealous of others and things like that. Um, like you see other people that I went to school with and like uh, I went to high school in a very rich area my first three years of high school. And like for me, it's the opposite. I'm not I don't come from a rich family and things like that. But now um, after graduating, I went in the army for four years and uh like you see these people and like they have these careers they're making like six figures and they're my age i'm 24 years old right now and it's just like dang like i thought going to the army and doing like what i believed was the right thing like serving my country and doing all these things like it would get me ahead like it would pay off but at the end of the day i don't think anybody sees it as uh very honorable like i did even last two years of me serving i started to see like wow this i need to get out because military is not what you think it is and uh yeah i just wanted to vent about that um and like also just in life like you go through life and i think everybody's looking for love everybody wants to feel loved and all these things but i feel like everybody's so fake about it you know like, you have a boss, and he's like, oh, I love you, I appreciate you, and things like that. But I feel like it doesn't come from, like, a sincere place. Like, I feel as if they say it to keep you in that position. Because they're telling you what you want to hear. So you'll stay longer, and you can be of use. And I think as a young man, it's hard. Because um, if you're not... If you can't be used, then you're useless. And, like, love is very conditional to a lot of people well a fake sense of love and like I don't know I've just been feeling I've been feeling kind of down about it you know and like I don't want to go into a relationship either I just got out of one why why would I want to get into another one and fuck them up too like I don't think that's like a good option you know I feel like like you're in a very lonely spot and I'm sure there's a l plenty of like 20 year olds 20 20 somethings that feel like I feel and like I, I, and like I can sit here and be jealous of other people's success and what they have. Like I have friends that have kids and are married already, but I think at the end of the day, they put in the work to get to where they are, you know. And like that's how they got there. So for me to sit here and hate when I didn't put a, put in that work, or like I didn't see that route and things like that, it's I don't know. I, I just wanted to vent about it because it's like you start feeling like you're behind in life. 
and uh, very discouraging. And like I feel like just 10 years ago it might have been easier to like get a job, save up for something, um, you know? But then like the the jealousy that you feel I don't think is very healthy for me because um, like I want power over people, the like the jealousy and loneliness I want, but like like you're supposed to love one another, you know, you're supposed to spread that love. And if like I feel this dark hole in my pit and I just spread that to one another, then maybe the others will spread that as just a never ending cycle of trying to get your get back, you, you know, and stuff. Um, that's a good IPA. Um, yeah. And, uh, for those of you who are concerned, no, I'm not going to go driving after this. <laughs> That'd be funny though. Maybe for another video, but, um, maybe I just need six more in me before I start feeling like I need my keys. But, um, yeah, like, I feel like everything, especially like affection and love is very conditional for most relationships. Like maybe for like, uh, parents to kids like you naturally just love that child unconditionally and you want the best for them and it, like it's one thing to be disappointed it doesn't mean you don't love them I understand that I understand that and I could see that but at the same time like your kids are an investment into your future when you uh when you have kids like you live on through your kids you spread your genes you teach them your morals and your lessons and they and a piece of you lives on through them and then they live on through their kids, but a piece of you lives on through their kids as well and things like that. So maybe like, I, I don't know, sometimes it's hard to just see life and you just think like everything's very transactional and it's like, it scares me because like one day, like you don't have the sufficient funds to be loved. Like you don't have what it takes in you to do, like do these things. And like my biggest fear is just like, burning all these bridges because like I was upset with myself and who I am and just not having anybody in the end of the day and like um I'm sure plenty of people know that I'm sure there's a lot of homeless people that ended up like that like they had to because at the end of the day I don't see how um I don't see how like some homeless people are homeless unless it's just their choice to like go do that. But some of them like they they had like a mental illness or a drug addiction and they had to like really like screw up if that like they didn't have any parents or friends or anybody to have their back. Like you really had to burn some bridges and go out of your way to get to that point in your life, you know, but like as much as I can judge them and be like, oh, they need a job. They need this. They need that. Like, that could just easily be me and me or you. And, like, um, and I'm one to judge. Like, I'll talk smack whenever I see homeless people. Like, I'm about to do a, a YouTube series where I cut open the tents with smoldering hot McDonald's and throw burgers at them. I was just playing. <laughs> I could do that. But, um, yeah, but, like, it's just, like, scary, you know? Like, I feel like everything's conditional. I put on this, like, fake face. I've always been known as like a very charismatic and like fun person, but like, I don't know, like you, you have a mask on and when you take it off, you just want to lay down and just reflect, pet your puppy. Honestly, dogs, dogs is the way to go actually, now that I think about it, like their love is unconditional. Like I'm, just, well, I, I fed her, so the love started from food and raising, but I bet if we were on the run, me and my puppy, like... It would be like a boy and his dog. Like, we would be on survival mode together. I'd split my can of beans. She'd split whatever she catches. We'd be on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we had to take someone out, we'd be taken out. She'd help me take that person out. She'd bite his ankles while I cut his head off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's in, a, like, a post-apocalyptic world. Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, when I think about, like... um Let's say, hypothetically, I get successful off of this or I find another revenue of money that I would deem myself successful as. Like, I've made enough money where I can buy land and be comfortable with my life. And I can start providing for my friends and family. But when is enough? Like, is everybody... What I fear is, like, my friends, I slowly become just, like, a cash cow. 
you know, like, oh, I need this, I need that, I need this. And I'm the type of person that promise you the world. Like, if I'm coming up, you're coming up with me, you know? Like, I, I give the, yeah, bruh, me and my boys, we starve together, we gonna feast together, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. And, like, but, like, to live up to it, like, if I only made a million, I want each of my boys to have 100K, but then I won't have a million no more. And that's, you know, it's like, oh, man. It's just, uh, just been thinking lately. This beer makes me think a little more. You know? I love the rain, guys. Like, it's not... I don't mean to bum you out. I do love this weather. Rain is my favorite weather. But I think I've been learning to love uh, the sun a lot more, you know? I've been learning to love the light a lot more. And I feel like I was in a much darker place a couple years ago. And, uh, which is... Yeah. But I think every season has a, has a reason. Like, I think, um... Like... Sometimes it has to rain for something to grow. I mean, like, you need to go through the storm and weather that storm for you to grow. Like, uh, like sometimes changing the way you think. Like, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. To What can I learn from that? Um, how can I do better next time? And things like that. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, these are probably thoughts everybody's had. These are probably thoughts like a seven-year-old girl had most seven-year-old girls have had. Sorry, I got held back in um, in kindergarten because uh, my social skills weren't up to par and I couldn't speak. Um, and uh, I remember, like, it's still, like, traumatizing. I guess maybe that's where, like, you need, like, my charisma comes from. A lot of people tell me I have charisma. Maybe I don't. You could tell me in the comments, oh, you're a stupid, ugly idiot. That's fine, I think. I think mean comments are just as funny <laughs> as funny comments. I love reading mean comments, and I don't know why. I think they're hilarious. But, uh, um, yeah, in the kindergarten, like, my first exp exposure to a lot of people, um, I was, like, this hyper kid, and I had to take Ritalin. And I, I can't remember if it was Ritalin or Adderall, but I've I've taken both at, uh, at a point in my life. But, um... Like, the teacher would be like, oh, it's, like, recess, like, here. And, like, they would have to, like, find a designated time to take my pills. So all the kids would, like, see that. So it's super hyper and all that. So no, none of the kids would want to sit next to me. And then them not wanting to sit next to me made me, like, oh, like, I'm just going to chase you around this during story time. Or I'm just going to force myself to sit next to you. And I'll just follow you until you give up and sit next to me. Like, um, I think that kind of set the president precedent however you say that word to why i am the way i am you know like you're like oh i just want to be liked like uh, come on man like i i'm not gonna take no for an answer like you're going to like me and i'm gonna figure out how you're going to like me like i'm either gonna get find your hobbies and be interested in, in, in it or like find your love language see how you speak how you like to flirt how you like to do this or that and things like that and uh that's just like the kind of person I am, like I, I'm not going to take no for an answer. You're going to learn to love me, you know, and, uh, give them Stockholm syndrome, a little crazy like that. But, um, yeah, while I'm telling like traumatizing stories, um, I had a best friend, uh, we, we started being friends when I was like eight or nine and, um, uh, he, the last time I had saw him, um, we had gotten in like a fist fight, uh, over, like he threw a ball at my face and like, I like put him in a head and arm and like threw him down and was like, yeah, what's up, bro? He got up and we started like throwing hands and stuff. And we were like 12, uh, he was a year older than me. So I think I was 13. He was 14. And then, like, I ended up throwing this huge fit because like he was stronger and he hit harder and I started crying. And stuff like that. And I remember, like, we, we chose to, like, uh, move on from it. But then, like, he invited me to his birthday. Because that was my birthday party. And then, like, he invited me to his birthday. And I said no. Because I was so embarrassed at the time. Like, I was 13. And I was like, oh, man. Like, it's ridiculous how I acted. Like, I was ashamed of that. But, um, 
like seven or eight months later he had uh taken his life um and uh they said it was over a girl but i i know like he had a hard upbringing but it, like uh, bringing it back to me like i feel like i was somewhat responsible for how i had treated him you know like uh that little fist fight like maybe that could have been a factor and things like that and uh yeah something i just wanted to get off my chest um yeah take another swig of this I remember my mom, uh, for some reason, had told my teachers, like, oh, like, this, my best friend had, like, passed away, and, like, this teacher was like, hey, like, I know what you're going through, and, I, like, I put on this fake smile, I was like, what the, get away from me, you stupid bitch, like, fucking, I didn't say that to her, but, like, I gave her this weird look, because I was trying to just, like, blend in, I didn't want people to know I was sad, um, yeah, but, I don't know. I guess uh, beer reviews are when I'll start getting deep. One thing that um, that I struggle with um, sometimes is talking to girls. Like, I feel like I have such a large ego that like if you're somewhat remotely like friendly to me, like oh she's in love with me. <laughs> Like, and I can't tell if I'm just being egotistical or not, you know? I think that might be... I'm sure plenty of you guys have that issue, but... I, I know for a fact I can be egotistical. Like, I think, like, oh, I'm the brainiac. If I can't beat you in a fight, I'm smarter than you. If, I, if I'm not smarter than you, then I can beat you in a fight. Like, <laughs> if I'm not... If I'm not either of those, I'm stronger than you. I'll just outlift you or, like, i better sociably or things like that. Trying to change the topic because the last topic uh, got me emotional. I don't know why I shared that, but too late now. <laughs> but um, yeah. And back on the topic of being behind, like I, I'm 24. I started school last year. I started school when I was 22, 24. So I've done like a year and a half of school so far. I'm on my fourth semester. All the, dude, like, everybody's finished school, like, two years before I have, and I feel so behind, like, these people probably started their own careers making, like, good money, Not, granted, like, the military pays me pretty good to do school now, I got very, like, coasting, and then I go to work, and I get, like, an extra sum of money that I can enjoy, but, um, yeah. But I just feel behind, because I don't have a career, I don't have, uh, and, like, Dude, so much, especially like the masculinity wave the last couple of years. Like, a, it's like, oh, like if you can't provide for a woman, you don't make this this much amount of money. Like, women aren't gonna be interested in you unless you're like six five and like, like you have something out of the normal. And I completely understand that. Like, uh, why would someone be interested in me if I don't have like something special about me, like money, or like being like six five? I'm six foot, but. 6'5", and buff, or like, you need this or that, this or that, it makes me think, I don't know if I covered this in another topic, but, like, uh, I heard this one person say, or one girl on, like, this podcast, it's like, oh, he needs to make six figures, six feet tall, and he needs to have six inches, six figures, six pack, and six, six figures, six pack, six figures, six pack, and, uh, six feet tall, that's it, that's it, but that's three sixes, dog, like, tell me, like, the Bible talks about this, like, I know I, I can have, like, a dark sense of humor, a sexual sexy sense of humor and all that, but, like, the Bible talks about that, like, 666, like, some people think it's the number, Nero, the emperor at the time, or things like that, but, like, that's the mark of the beast, bro, but, um, yeah, and you just feel like, dude, how am I going to make it in this world? Like, I feel like the only way to make my parents proud is either to have kids and have a wife and kids and like, be like, yeah, like you will live on through, through me and through my kids. Like we will live on and we'll be okay because of like the tool set and the mindset and the thing, the values you put into me. And that's how you like, you make your parents proud. But 
like, if I had a career by now, I could also help provide for them, you know? And it's just, like, so discouraging, dude. The world's crazy. This is bussing, dude. I'm not going to lie. It's very good. Boquito mojitos. Yeah. Let me know in the comments what your guys' dream car is. Right now, my current dream car would be the uh, the Cadillac Escalade. Like, that looks like a mafioso car. That thing is lit, dude. You could hide a freaking weapon in there. You could tint the winds, windows, look like a mafioso. Put on, like, a button-up. Be like, what are you looking at, fool? You, you disappear looking at me like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, those cars are sick. I really like those cars, but... Um, yeah, go down in the comments, tell me what your favorite car or dream car is currently, and uh, let me know what your favorite beer is. Love to know. Good talk. We could chop it up in the comments. Uh, yeah. I'm going to keep yapping until I finish this beer. Um, yeah, and uh, what else? What, what else can I talk about? I don't know why got like really heavy at one point i feel really embarrassed <laughs> i still feel embarrassed you know i made i've made a lot of friends in this life but i like i've kept say like like the close ones like i consider family kept like four or five and it's like and it's sad because, you, like, as you grow up, you don't see him as much. Like, I made a really close friend in the service. Like, I consider him a brother to me. And, uh, like, you don't get to see him as much. And, like, you learn so much from each other. Like, especially in the service, like, you're going to have a lot of lows. Like, being away from family, being overseas, or being in the field. Doing all these things that, like, most people don't experience. And, like, that one friend experienced with me or has similar experiences that can, like, relate to me. And, like, not a lot of people in the civilian world relate, you know? Like, it's like, bro, I don't... Like, for me, I genuinely don't understand why you're, like, stressing over this. Like, we, our lives could be threatened right now. Someone's life could be threatened right now. It could be life or death right now. And, like... Like, you're stressing over something stupid like that. Like, I don't know. But, like, I had a... I still have a friend like that. That, like, I can relate to. And, like... And, like... That friend... To me, like, he's... Like, you see... For me, i seen that friend, like, grow up to be, like, a man that, like, you can be proud of. Like, he... He has a family. He took on a family at a very early age. Like, you see, like, the things he struggled with, but he was able to overcome those. I think it's very important you got to have friends that, like, you can learn from, you know? You don't want just, just to have friends that, like, you can have fun with. Obviously, having fun is, like, the main part of having a friend. But, like, that's what establishes, like, deep connections. Like, you're proud of that friend because they were over able to overcome that. And, like... And, like, at, at points where they were struggling, you were there with them. You helped them. I didn't help them with everything. But, like, you know, you could be emotional support. You could be like, hey, man, like, you need to talk about it. You can talk about it. Or, like, you can, I'll just sit here, like, while you're going through that. Like, if you need, like, just someone to sit next to, you know. And, like, um, I don't think those experiences are something I'm ever going to experience again. Like, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to make a friend. Like, like I, I mean, I have a lot of, other, like, the four other friends. Like, I've also had experiences like that. But, like, after that, like, how many more experiences are you going to have after that? Like, I feel like that was it. And, like, I'm kind of on my own right now. And I'm so behind. And, like, I don't know. Like, I, I miss these guys, you know? Like, I just want to do them proud. I want to be like, yeah. And then, like, since you were there when I struggled, like, I want to give you a little bit of something, like, that that I made, you know? But I got to find a career first. And it's so weird because, like, I have a career in mind, but it's not going to pay that well. I'll probably make, like, 70, 80K. But, like, I want to make, like, six figures. I want to make a million dollars. I want to do all these things. But, you know, it's so easy to just feel behind. 
and coming again to like being jealous like these kids like that I grew, went to school with like they just had rich parents they had both parents together like and it's so easy to be jealous of their success it's like dude you had everything handed to you like I had to endure these things yeah, or even not just them but like people that just give up morals like you see chicks I went to school with become strippers or like only fans models or like dudes selling drugs and things like that and they are so ahead of everybody else with in terms of money but like for some reason you have like morals you're like oh I can't do that like that's just a little too 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 much for me and like I'm not doing that like, you sell a part of your soul when you do something like that, you know? But, but at the same time, I'm jealous of, like, what they have, you know? It's just, uh, yeah. Just, uh, I guess this this isn't just a review. This is therapy sessions with uh, Kenny. A rainy weather set the, the tone of the video. I want to cut myself on that. Uh, I, I mean, at the end of the day, there's so much to be grateful to for too. I got a roof over my head. I got food in my belly. Um, I'm not fat. <laughs> I'm not fat. I can say that. Not fat, but, uh, yeah. I guess, I, like, I got people that care for me. I got friends I'm still in contact with. Still having a good time. Still enjoying life a lot of the time. Uh, my health is pretty good. I've been eating better. Like, there's things to be proud of. But, like, just like a milestone. Well, but what all what I'm also afraid of is like what happens when you hit that milestone? Then what what else is left for you? Am I gonna feel satisfied when I get there? If I made a million dollars, would I feel satisfied, or would I be like, now nah, I need five million dollars, now I need ten million dollars, and what am I willing to do to get there? Things like that, and like aspects of like that, like scare me. Like is it, is it ever going to be enough? Am I just like too much? Yeah. I read my Bible. I go to I go to uh, church, all that. But what I'm also afraid of is like I don't know if any other people feel like this, but like you do, you try to like do all that, but like at the same time, you don't really fit in at church. You don't really fit in at school. You don't fit in anywhere with people in your ideology. And at the same time, you feel like. Like, oh, you could do all the right things. You could give up, repent from sin, all that, and still not qualify for, like, heaven or to be in the pre presence of God. You're like, I don't know if any other anybody else feels like that, but, like, that's what I'm afraid of. Like, am I ever going to feel like I belong in the good place? Play, like, ultimate paradise where we're, we're all supposed to be, you know? And in the Bible, like, uh, especially in the Old Testament, I know... Uh, Jesus uses like the place of like gnashing teeth and I, I think that's how it is and uh, gnashing a teeth and uh, scratching a claw I, I forgot how it goes but in the Old Testament like what I viewed hell as is like the absence of God like it's just emptiness because God is love God is warmth God is like comfort where we want to be um, to like so is hell like just emptiness, darkness, cold? Because warmth is energy and all that. Just like you're in like this empty, freezing place alone. And like it's scary. You know, I don't see hell as just a fiery place where like you're burning up. Maybe like they use hell imagery because like when you're so cold, you're burning. Um, and like the winter and things like that. Maybe that's why they use like the like the burning imagery and things like that. I don't know. Just thought. Yeah. Like, uh, if you guys want to, like, uh, go in the comments and vent about where you're at in life or just thoughts and things like that, like, go ahead, man. Like, uh, 
Uh, I mean, I appreciate the feedback. It keeps uh, activity in the in my videos, like uh, what's it called, like feedback and all that. I just like want to know you guys. Like I enjoy making friends and ha try to help people feel a little less empty and lonely. And like at the same time, if you're engaging on my videos, then like it makes me feel a little less lonely and like um, empty, you know? Yeah. Well, as the last swig, that concludes the yapping session. Uh, I just had, I don't know how long this video was, but hopefully it's not too long. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate your view. Um, if you want to join the crew, then subscribe. And watch all my videos and just keep watching the new ones and just support, support your boy. And I'll keep cranking out the content, the shorts, the videos, the lives, the all of it. I want to be engaged. And, um, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. I love and appreciate every single one of you. Um, I got to figure out a way to, like, find engagement for, like, people that actually watch my videos. Not just people that just subscribe because they're nice, but, like... People that are engaged with the content, like genuinely are a fan. Like I'd love to know each and every one of you. But yeah, so that's it. Goodbye.